So growing up in Chicago, did you have family that was in, you know, you, I've read some background that you, you know, you, you started uh, trading with $10,000 when you were 12. You know, how does one uh, get involved? You know, what were you doing? It was, you actually, it was actually when I was 15. So okay. I, I, I learned that I wanted to invest at a young age because I had been caddying. I was, I was caddying at the local country club, I caddied for 10 years. And, wow. you know, you caddy for – and I, I recommend, you know, when I have a kid – and I would love for him to caddy it because it's a great thing to realize what you want to do because you're among a bunch of very successful people that have made it in life from all different walks of life, so whether they're, they're traders, whether they're investment managers, whether they're, they own manufacturing companies, they're lawyers. You kind of get to see the gamut and you kind of get to see what works for you. And I, there was a group of, uh, traders that I used to caddy for that, uh, their lifestyle just seemed very exciting, very challenging, and it immediately wanted I wanted to get involved in the market. Um, so where I was caddying a lot. Where were you, so Western Golf Club? I was at uh, Glen Oak Country Club in Glen Ellen. All right. Well, I'll tell um, you, I, 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 I have to agree with you because I also was a kid who, you know, I had a paper out for six years, but when I wasn't delivering papers in the morning, as soon as I got done with my papers, I went and looped two times a day myself. Not as long as you. I did it for about four years, but I found the same experience. Uh, you know, I, I, I caddied at, at a place where, again, you had lo doctors, lawyers, business yeah. people of all different walks of life in the Detroit area, and you got exposed to, you know, different, like, as you said, lifestyles and business choices that you didn't, you, you're really not going to be exposed to just by going to college. So, Right. I mean, if you're in school and you learn about it, it's just not the same as having firsthand being able to be with a guy for four hours during yeah. a round of golf and be him, see the friends, the guests that he brings out in the course. And you see if that lifestyle, those different types of challenges is what you, what you want. Right. And I found so as soon as I started getting money, I, I initially wanted to jump into the stock market. I remember um, the first stock I bought in uh, 96 um, and it was GE and I bought it for like around $18 and I remember I sold it right around for around right around $50 right around when the tech boom right the bubble right. there and I remember thinking oh investing so easy <laughs> and you know, you know that's how that's how everyone is when they have winners right. and you know that was the same time you know a lot of the companies that I made a lot of money off of, from Global Crossing to Exodus Communications, Vertical Net, they're all gone. They're all gone. They're all they're gone. gone. Yeah. And I took them on round trips time after time after time, and I was able to, you know, make a, a good amount of money, and then I and I lost a bunch of money, brought it back, but eventually I was un unable to make enough where I was able to, you know, fund my college. So yeah, so. You Again, great experience doing that, and you were, uh, uh, you know, cutting your teeth in an obvious huge bull market. So yeah, when, you know, at when, the time you don't quite know. <laughs> when did you? When did you? Uh, when did you take your first, uh, you know, paw across the face with that uh, bull market dying at the, in March of two thousand? You know, when did you? When did that hit well, you? Well, I took. A, I, I I had I had I made about ten times my money, and. I then gave back 50% of that in about three or four months. Right. And then I got a little bit back, and then I was just like, well, I'm out. And that situation, and, you know, later when I went on to be a trader, uh, has really helped. I feel like as an investor, you can't, until you have that loss, fear of loss isn't enough. You have to actually experience it, feel the doldrums yeah. of what it's like to lose money. And that helps, I think, in risk management when you're investing going forward. And that was my first taste of, wow, I had a lot of money, but guess what? I lost a lot of money. Yeah, so, again, it's, it becomes very uh, vivid and real when you watch your money go, uh, as you said, Dan, tenfold. I mean, wow, what a, you know, what a, what a great experience. But then you saw your, your equity drawdown right. get cut in half and 50%, which at the end of the day is still a five-fold return. But, you know, if we look at that on a chart, you're going to see, bam, parabolic, and then you pull back to that 50% retrace. What you did, what you did, however, called intu intuition, I don't know what you want to call it, but that was very smart, and probably most people have a hard time pulling back at that point and saying, no, i got to reevaluate, i got to check myself. 
what did I miss? What do I, you know, how do I need to proceed and go on from here? Because clearly you learn something by losing your money. Right. And, uh, my other kind of risk management session, I, after I had graduated school, I actually got a job, uh, trading, uh, for one of the fellows I used to caddy for. Right. And I came on at his firm, which was Mac Futures, which bought by Revco. I don't know if you remember Revco. It was that oh, company yeah. that went public that had a And, you know, I was a part of Mac Futures of that company. And so you come on, you're in a training group of, uh, of 10 people, and uh, it's futures trading. So you trade, um, I trade uh, fixed income futures, 10 years, 30 years. Uh, five year, two year, I traded euro yeah, dollars. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I also traded, uh, uh, boon and baubles and stuff of that nature. Rarely traded equities, uh, more or less I was trading just fixed income interest rate products. So, but, was that, was that in between college or during your college years that you were No, that was them? right after I got out of school. It was right after I got out of school. And that's kind of what made me graduate early. Like I graduated a year early because I was so ready to get out there, and I right. so wanted to be, uh, I, I so wanted to get a piece of the action that I, I just, I graduated early and I came out and I immediately started working for Mac Futures. Okay, so you're, you're trading for them. Uh, what was your, what was your responsibilities initially? How did you, how did you phase so, into the business? So initially, what you do is you go through this training program, and you have to take a bunch of tests. And then you go on these simulators, and you start you start doing different types of trades, and then you go live. Were you and trading the deal on the floor is, or upstairs or both? No, no, no. This is electronic. This is electronic. Okay. This is in beginning of 2004. All right. Um, and so you trade interest rate products, and I started trading initially on the 10-year, and they start you out with small amounts. And how it works is you're at a 50-50 rev share until you get to 300000 and then okay. you get to renegotiate your, your, your cut. So you're getting fifty so, percent of every dollar you make after after costs and and uh, right. but on the risk side you're also were you pony did you have to put up your own dollars to to play in no, the pool? No, you did not. Okay. No, you did not. Um, but a lot of people like so I was there so a two hundred person shop I was there for a little over two years and I saw over a hundred and some people get fired. It was right. tough. It was tough. And, and what so do you my think? first. What do you Go think? The, you, since you brought that up, what do you think the, the 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 key reason? Were you guys first of all were you guys day trading only, or were you swing trading? And were more you? Some people were day trading. Some people were swing trading. I was more swing trading uh, at the time. Uh, the big uh, bull flattener trade was was the popular trade of the time. That I just I lived on that trade and I just crushed that trade for so you're as long the thirty year futures and short the five year futures and I that was that was when the yield curve was becoming inverted. Right. Uh, and so that that was my uh, most prized trade and I was bumped up my size from in one year from trading uh, ten lots to what you start out with to trading a hundred lots. Right. Um, so one thing about the market is during during the economic number, there's not from payrolls today. It's not as volatile as it was then. Yep. You would have uh, you would have a, a jobs number, and back then they did not predict anything close like to like they do now. It's very close now it seems. But they would say, oh, there's gonna be hundred thousand jobs, and it would just be like four hundred, or it'd be like negative two hundred, like just way off. Right. So the bond market would just go crazy. And believe it or not. This firm allowed you to trade bigger size at times with greater volatility, which, if you think about it, doesn't necessarily make much sense, but this is how it works.